Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Gunny's Tech Tips. In today's episode, I'll be reviewing the brand new Avermedia Game Broadcaster HD. This capture card supports HDMI, VGA, and component video capturing at resolutions up to 1920 by 1080. It requires only a single PCI Express times one slot, and so will work in any PCI Express slot that you have available. The card is in a low-profile form factor and comes with a low-profile bracket. For those users who require a shorter card, the Game Broadcaster HD also includes a female RCA to 3.5mm stereo audio adapter, as well as a male 8th inch, also known as 3.5mm, to male 8th inch jumper cable. These accessories are needed to start out. We'll use the built-in Avermedia Media Center. It's a small download. You can get off the website. You start it up, you get a nice little splash screen. You have several options. You have capture, which you use to view as well as record from the card. Video to play back previous played videos. Music, if you want to play some music using the software. Pictures, where you can view pictures as well as screenshots they've taken from the card. And settings, where you can change settings with the software. And also some default options for the capture card. The main thing you're going to be interested in is capture. When you're presented with capture, you're given a screen here. You have four options on the left. Live, time shift, which will allow you to play you would a DVR, as well as playback record files, and also create a schedule for recording. If say you want to use it to record TV shows, that kind of thing. At the top, you have options. Choose between the two inputs. You have HDMI and D-Sub, which is the VGA port on the back. Currently, you're reviewing HDMI. The video you're seeing is, is currently being recorded by the actual capture card. It is a full 1080p, if you don't believe me. Full 1080p, right there. And is doing rather well. Um, as you can see by my mouse movement, there is minimal latency between what you see on the screen and what you see in the preview window. But I do not recommend trying to play games from it. Recording is relatively simple. You just hit the big red record button down here. The red play button is to start time shift. And the card also supports for, if you have a source that allows it, 3D capture, 3, 3D video capture. So go ahead. This is the VGI. I will demonstrate capture from the VGA port using component coming on my PlayStation. Takes a moment, there we go. So here is PlayStation capturing uh, via 720p as uh, most PS3 games do not natively output 1080p and the PS3 does not have a, a built-in upscaler like the Xbox does. So when it when you start playing a game, you can have 1080p on the menu, it'll display just fine and capture just fine in the card, but once you go into game, your actual resolution will be will change uh, to match what the game is outputting. As you can see, I'm currently on 720p, outputting via component. The card also supports capturing H HDMI from consoles, as long as your console does not uh, use HDCP. The PlayStation uh, uses the HDCP on all content, and the new Xbox, Xbox 360 Slim also uses HDCP. Um, the, old, the older versions of the Xbox uh, do not for now. We, I'm not sure what Microsoft plans in the future, so a safe bet is to record using Component. So that's a nice little overview of the Avermedia Media Center software. Now we'll switch over to XSplit, which tends to be the streaming software of choice by most people. If you've used XSplit, you will know this screen. I've created a new layout just to test the card. So you prevent, you're presented with this screen when you first open XSplit. The capture card uses direct show, so almost any video capture software should be able to see it and also add it. To do so in XSplit, you click Add, then Add Camera. In the options, as you see here, I have several. Uh, you want to choose the Avermedia HD Capture. It comes up right away. Uh, if it does not, and, you, and when you see it, it was working in Media Center. Um, the main reason is because settings do not transfer over. In order to fix that, you want to right-click on the on the source, configure video capture, make sure your video standard is set to NTSCM, unless you're using the card in other areas of the world. 
I myself am using it in the US, which uses NTSCN as a standard. Then you want to go to video capture format and make sure your output size is what you're trying to capture. In my case, 1280 by 720 at 59.94. You do not want to change your color space slash compression. And the final option is crossbar. Here you want to make sure you choose the correct input. Video RGB in is the component slash VGA input. Serial digital in is the HDMI input. I can show you that right now. Takes a second to load up. And you may need to go back and change the capture format once it switches. There are a few one or two bugs with this, uh, but my, my I'm capturing my PC at 1920 by 1080. So you select that here, OK, and it comes right up. Um, one problem I have seen though is if you do if you switch from say a 1080p to 720p source, like I'm doing right now, you'll see the you'll see the 720p source, but you also get this box around the outside. Um, this is because it's still trying to send you a 1080p. You just have to go back into video capture format and change it to back to 1280 by 720. And that'll fix the issue. So that's the card in XSplit. You will need to, if you use multiple programs, you can only have one program access the card at once. So you need to delete the source or close XSplit or using another application. So now we have Flash Media Live Encoder. This is pretty standard for most people. You want to go to Device and select Avermedia HD Capture. And as you see, it comes right up. Uh, in order to change the settings for it, you go to the wrench, and this pops up right away. You can change all three, or you can change video decoder as well as crossbar in here. Uh, as before, NTSM, NTSCM, and crossbar, video RGB in, or HDMI. Hit OK. Now, I changed from 720p to my 1080p capture. Um, FME handles it a bit differently. You have to go into input size and change it to 1080, which would refresh it to the input size, the correct input size, which is 1920 by 1080. If you are to select a, keep the larger size, say you can go from 1080 to 720, uh, you will need to go to crossbar, RGB in, and the same issue XSplit has, it has the outside, even though it's not being updated, as you can see by my mouse, it's not, moved, not showing up on the stream. You'll then need to go to down here, and select 1280 by 720. And it fixes the issue right away. In order to use the HDMI audio in Flash Media Live Encoder, you will need to go to Device and choose Avermedia HD Audio Cap. If you're trying to capture using Component, you'll need to select the, the line in or mic input that you, that you decide to use with the converter they gave you. The card works right out of the box with the majority of streaming softwares out there that most people use. Because it uses direct show drivers, it should work with a wide range of programs and almost any streaming code software that you have. If you like this review, please make sure to favorite, follow the channel, and I appreciate your support.